Hello everyone, it's Pastor Lon, my beautiful wife, Robin Lynn. Hope everybody's doing well today. Want to welcome y'all back to our next episode of Come Sit a Spell. So I want y'all to come sit a spell with us uh, in the office. Uh, it's my office and Robin Lynn's office back here in the little building behind the house. It's too cold to be outside. It's like 45 degrees. I usually ask for an update by now, so I'll let Robin 44, Lynn. 44, I'll oh, Okay. 44. And it's supposed to drop to 38 and a chance of scattered frost tonight. Ain't that something? And it was I just mean, I'm ready business. to get the wood here. I mean, the fireplace, fireplace fired up. Yep. Yep. But uh, we knew we wasn't quite done with old man winter yet. And, and uh, unfortunately, we're not. We're but. expecting rain Friday and Sunday, 45% chance, and Monday, 60% chance. And then next Tuesday, a lot about 30. Wow. Another chance of frost. So the lemon trees that I took out of the greenhouse have got to go back yep. into the greenhouse. Well, you took them out, you trimmed them up too, didn't you? You didn't do some. And I watered them real good today. And I'll, I also put some um, moisture, to make sure our worms and our worm bin had um, some moisture. And I gave them some carrots and stuff to eat. A lot of them are probably don't even know we raise uh, red worms. They don't want a couple here? Yeah. They call, I think they're called red wigglers. Anyway, we do that for the, the worm compost. The castings. Yeah, worm casting. You can put it in your garden. And stuff good like fertilizer. Yep. Sure is. So you can use that what they call worm tea or whatever. I don't. I hadn't went that far. Man, the first time you mentioned worm tea, man, your mom and them. Yeah. They thought we was talking about tea drink. But of course, it's. But they're still. They've been in the greenhouse all winter. Yeah. So they. But. But they were dry on top. But so you can get the tea. And, you can get the tea and like squirt it on the leaves and stuff like that too, right? Yeah. I'm not. I hadn't gotten that far yet. <laughs> We can go fishing anytime anyway, we want to, though. That's true. That's true. We got plenty of red worms around here. We're uh, wigglers. Yeah. We ordered the little kit. Yeah. It's got like three or four stacks on yep. it. Yeah. I can't remember. I didn't go down to the bottom. I just went to the second one and I seen some wiggling in there. They are really tough. It don't take a lot to oh, keep yeah. them alive. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Because we've them. had them out here under the shed for through winters before yeah. a couple. And we we just, like I said, I think it's two years. Because last winter, I think we. Left them out there. Yeah, but this, we put them in the. You put, keep them moist though, and keep the newspaper in there. We do sometime and put the uh, feed them the different. Uh, they don't take a lot of food. I'm telling vegetables you. Vegetables and stuff in there. They don't. They don't take a lot mm -hmm. to feed them. But because I forget about them. Yeah, that's a pretty, lot of times. <laughs> pretty interesting. When I, when pretty I think interesting about it. though. Yep. Yeah, well, I was it. just kind of out there piddling around in the greenhouse and pulling some weeds out the um, raised beds, and I cut the rabbit some swiss chard and just different little and i pulled some more carrots yeah and we fed into the chickens today the, the, um, the, the ends, ends of them, of them yeah. well i actually fed the green parts to the rabbit yeah and then i the ones i cut i gave the ends yeah, to the, the excess and the middle parts going in my time yeah that's right yeah. so see there want just those carrots a few carrots you run right here on your homestead fed the rabbits fed the chickens and fed us and All i put feed some us. in the worms and the worm. So see there, that's what I like about homesteading and um, you know composting and stuff like that. Food, you... Yeah, our compost piles too. We gotta get out there and get them stirred up. Get them. But I got up. a lot more carrots in that bed too, full, and I'm just doing it as you know as I eat them. Well, speaking of gardening stuff though, you can tell them what you got. What well, we got a little greenhouse you said we took a picture of that last time and put it in there yeah, but you I got um believe how quick that stuff's coming it's up amazing i mean I, just, I told him the other night i said i can't believe those little seeds i, I mean some of them are itty bitty seeds i put yeah. in there and they just over like overnight they'll pop up yeah and i'll go there several times during the daytime and just watch them and you yeah. can it's almost you can like you can see, see them, them. going because yeah. can't every time i go over there they're taller and taller and taller i was just there what was it last night looked down there were a certain height and i went back there today and the seed and look that you could tell they had grown in 24 hours and that little greenhouse well i guess that's what you call a seed starting it'll keep it like 99 yep. degrees in there yeah that's it's a pretty neat little greenhouse for starting usually, the inside um, cut it off at night and then i plug it back up in the morning but those look, this is a, a sermon. The, all those little seeds, once they start popping their little head up, they start reaching for the reaching sun. For the light. Or light, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And you can switch and I, it. And I do change them during and, the daytime. And there'll be one way going to the light. You turn around, they'll turn and go back the other way to the light. I usually change them at least once a day. And what all you say you had in there? I got cabbage, peppers, tomato. Tomatoes is the most I got in there, and peppers, and cabbage, and 
bunch of onions and I got some uh, flowers and I got some a good bit of different herbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of the herbs that I tried in the greenhouse last year are starting, I, I didn't succeed, but they're coming up in here. So you just keep your eyes on it better and, and know, you know, because yeah. I'll miss them each day and stuff like that. And you know, when they're getting dry in and the greenhouse. Yeah, there's no need being in a hurry right now because, like I said, we got a chance of scattered frost next, well, between now and next week this time. So we we know not to put anything out in the ground that can get burnt. Blueberry bushes and stuff, though, they 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 pretty much almost passed the bloom stage. Yeah. So I don't know how bad that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to wash them off. Uh, that's helped us one sometime in, in the past. Get out Last the sun year, the and wash same, them off. What day was it? I don't week, this past weekend. Well, that was, Last that was year we, we went in. Brass Town and it snowed and when we we left the babysitters here which are um with Michaela and Bradley mm -hmm. and and they put some on um, we told them to put that cloth, the cloth over on. the um blueberries yeah but I think the cloth knocked the blooms off and yeah. that's why we lost almost all our blueberries nothing they done wrong no, but we, we told, we told them to do that and the wind was so strong it was it was a bad winter storm that time but this time I think the blooms are have done what they're you know I think so. But I'm still to scatter frost each morning. I'm going to get out and go wash it off. You know, that that helps some, I think. Try to wash it off before the sun burns it back. Yep. So. Well, they sure have. They've had a lot of blooms on them. But, and even the fig trees budding out. Yeah. So. Y'all let us know what you've always heard. We've always heard right here. that, And I know you really can't go by this anymore because of the way the weather is all messed up. Man's messed up. Man's messed up the weather. But... It used to be there was two trees that my granddaddy used to tell me once you see those trees budding, um, winter was pretty much pretty much gone. No Spring was here, crosses. yeah, and that's the pecan tree and the china berry tree. Now y'all might not have china berry trees in your neck of the wood. Most people got pecan trees, or some people call them pecans, pecan. but we call them pecans here in South Carolina where we live. But y'all let us know if y'all have ever heard that about the pecan tree or the china berry tree. I haven't looked at our china berry tree. I haven't either. But or the pecan. We got one pecan tree. Yeah, well, we got a good many pecan trees on the way to church, too. I might check them and see if they started to. budding out or not. We got to clean up some more of that out there where we're going to put the in-ground garden. But, I mean, we ain't really, really put nothing in the ground outside because Just of the... Just the green stalk. Yeah, because of the frost. And I got some green stalk. I got uh, spinach, some lettuces some radish and some carrots, but I just planted the seeds so it won't, they're not up yet. Yeah. So. But that's, that's pretty much what's going on with the garden stuff. For now, we'll give you more, another update when it gets a little further along when the weather gets right. Plus the ground ain't even warm enough yet. To, you know, you gotta get a certain temperature and stuff when the, when the warm weather gets here. But I've seen a couple volunteer um, sunflowers out there. They're about that tall in the, yeah. in the garden. Yeah. yeah. So, them or not. for the first time today, we got our sheep moved out into the, um, where we planted those cover crops where we had the corn and stuff that got blown down last year. We planted that, I don't know what all we did plant, just a variety of stuff. I know clovers out there and, um, some peas, peas and stuff like um, that, but uh, and some of the stuff we planted, some of the volunteer stuff, but turnips, yep, collard, but man, okay. we 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 turned those sheep out there today. We put that got that premier fence and we put up. Because it's um, not connected with the pasture. Right, it's separate. And see, that's gonna help us a lot because you now we got rid of all the cows except that one that's going to the butcher on the twentieth of April, and the other ones I'll let y'all know on there that we did get them to the sale last week. Well, the sale was uh, this past Tuesday. Anyway, what I was saying, we got the cows are gone except that one, and we got her locked in the back pasture feeding her own hay and stuff until we take her to the butcher next month. But um, it, I told Rob Lynn Day we moved those sheep out there and put that premier fence, and it's uh, solar. It's, it's electric, but it's solar, and you can move it wherever you want to. It's real easy to move, quick to move, and the sheep are not like the ghosts. The sheep don't try to tear out of there. And Plus, Ben and Denise at Renew oh, Homestead, yeah. where we got them from, they, oh, they've already had them trained. And uh, we appreciate that, but that was just a blessing. Um, that was easy peasy. Yeah, I got a I got a little video with that. I might I might insert a little video uh, that I done like a one minute video in the in here of of the sheep out there grazing. All right, 
Let the rotational grazing begin. How about that? Got our premier one fencing up. Got the girls out here chomping down on this fresh food in this field. And they seem to be enjoying every bit of it. Got that fenced in as they continue to eat. We'll, we got a lot to move them all the way down this side. We lost a long way down to the where the bees are. We so excited about what we're doing down here now in South Carolina. Cause that's what happens with the rotation of grazing. What I was saying, I told Rob Lee and we moved from one place to the other. It's a lot easier to deal with sheep and goats and you know rabbits, the smaller things we got right now. <laughs> yeah, instead of oh, the horses and the cows. And if you ain't careful, those those animals can hurt you. If you don't be yeah, careful well, what you're doing. Once we get it, get it. Fine-tuned, I can probably move them by myself. Right, and but what I was getting at, we got that whole field in front of the house that we got y'all to pray about, and we're able to lease it now. That's where we got them at right now. But, I mean, we let them out there today, but till I get a sheep track right there where I can put them in that for safety at night and stuff and move them, we having to let them go back in the pasture, let them go back up to the shed, to the barn, and where they're safe at night. But with us having that big field over there now, that's going to give the uh, pasture time to grow. I'm excited about that. I mean, I'm really excited about that. guess what I've been that. looking back, that looking rotate, at? Getting more premier fencing. Well, I already ordered one. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, something else that we're looking at getting, and I'll let you go ahead and tell them that's been a dream of ours. What? No, <laughs> but that's one too. Oh, she got more than one dream then. <laughs> yeah, Talk we to. have been, I've been looking at high tunnels too. Yeah. That we really... I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, we're hoping to get one of those. Because of the sheep, and probably we're going to increase our herd. I've been looking at uh, some border collies. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. The lady's been sending me pictures. She keeps sending me the ones that she's got left. She keeps sending me pictures of them. Well. And she's got one black and white female left, and I think two or three red and white females and i didn't even know that she, border collies came in red and white but they do i, I they looked do. it up and they come in a variety of colors is she local i think so well we gotta take a road trip and run. it's local but they're akc registered which don't mean nothing but which goes back to you know we may end up getting one of those, one of those dolls to help us too we got sadie too but we can let sadie out there now with the sheep and the goats where we wasn't too you know too keen on well, letting her out there around the cows and get kicked and stuff by the cows, but she's not gonna hurt the sheep or the goat, and the goats and sheep won't be able to hurt her. So, but border collie might be good too. I figure as a puppy, raise it up. Yes, but we I mean, we just that's just a thought. Well, we're gonna have to have something out there. You know, we got rid of the guard but, dogs. But a border collie wouldn't protect them. No, that's true, but. So we might. Well, we're not going to leave them way out there in the pasture at night by themselves unless we have a, a sheep trap to lock them up in or we just bang back up to the barn until we figure something out. But anyway, we're excited about that. Yeah, the um, the sheep and the rotational grazing. Uh, we had so many people on here that encouraged us about that and um, with the likes of Joel Salatin and what's the other guy that <coughs> Denise went to see? <coughs> Um, Greg Judy, we've been he's, watching a lot of his videos. I love watching him. He's very informative. He's, he he's is. down to earth. Yeah, Greg so Judy, he's, yeah. he's the man. I really like, we learn a lot from him. But Yeah, and he says, don't put him in a barn. That's what he said. And yeah. they're not used to going in a barn, but they're not. they like to go in our barn. <laughs> they're, they're more hardy than you think they are when yeah, it comes to can. weather. They will eventually probably stay out. But but we'll have the tractor. We'll we just we just feel like we've turned the corner with a lot of stuff with our animals. And we started out gung ho. That's the way everybody is. I think got too many animals. Didn't have enough infrastructure to take care of them. But as time went on, and Living if learning. if you if you if you do that, I would encourage anybody just starting out with that. Not that we any professionals, but we have been we are far enough down this road that we can give some advice now. Don't do it. Don't don't <laughs> don't. Well, I mean, don't get too many too quick. I'm not. I would well, encourage I mean, everybody to get involved. Well, if you want to, 
doing, but eventually, I mean, you just have to figure out what you, what works what for best you. best uh, fits you. And yep. that was just not something we wanted to, we didn't want to spend that much money in hay every yeah. winter feeding cows that we couldn't even touch. Yeah. You know, wasn't. those red ones were just. So, we decided to get rid of them and sell I them. I want something that, if I go out there, they're not going to run me over and kill me. Yeah. <laughs> But we was able to borrow with Ben and Denise for the with the cows for the sheep and stuff, and then we. Now, I mean, they'll have those cows eating out of their hands. You know, the two they got would come up and eat out of your the yeah. bucket, but yeah. But anyway, that's kind of where we are with the livestock. I think it should be here quickly. Yeah. I had already had we already had one hundred foot premier fencing, but it wasn't. It's good, but Denise gave me a. Uh, Another one that they they like better because they had used the same one that we had. To but it's got more posts. Yeah, it's got the posts are closer together and the posts have the little step. I thing love the little. I wouldn't get the little it step just thing. Just step, mash it down in the ground. Yeah. Um, the other ones do okay, but you have to you have to if you got a, some hard dirt, it's kind of hard to get that you post down in the ground. You have to have, and plus the the posts are further <coughs> apart, so that causes the be the more flimsy. To say yeah, not as secure. Yeah. But if you got power on it and we yeah. found out hey tell them how we found out we had I mean we put them in there to begin with and didn't even turn the power on for what they were in there wow like, they didn't even mess with trying to because get they out. were trained to the fence they knew you know. but we put power on left it out there and we, we got the little well we got the little test it. we got the little tester Robert Lynn was going to test it with the tester but we didn't have to tell them why Cooper touched it <laughs> Cooper run up there and stuck his little nose to it and still like that he said oh buddy I told Robbie look at it it's working yeah, and right. then the tester showed us it was working too so I like that solar box and you just move it around where you need it. That's that's really It was intimidating before we just went out there and just done it. It's like that with a lot of things in life. You don't you think there's more to it than there really is, but we've been hearing different ones telling us, you know, just in my mind it's, it's, I knew it's I, easy. I watched so many videos of people doing it and I'm thinking And oh, now look we were out there today moving that fence around and had our sheep out there and man, I tell you that's shepherds. I tell you. And those sheep are so sweet, they they are so gentle and they are. They are. Why didn't we get them sooner? Yeah, I know. Before we got cows <laughs> and horses. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention to them about the two more things about the animal stuff I want to mention. I'm going to let tell them about your peacock eggs. I had three of them. I don't remember them. if I told them I had them. Like, I don't remember if you did either, but you. Well, she had, like, well, day before yesterday, she had three. And I went in there and checked it, and I and I. And you were going had been, I had been going in there and they had been moved out from where she was laying. I'm like, they had been scattered or something. And I thought that little rooster was going in there messing with them. And then I went in there the day before yesterday and saw three. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take them and put them in the incubator. I said, no, I'm going to wait till she lays all she's going to lay. Because last year she laid five at a time. Mm -hmm. And I left them in there and... And I went out there yesterday. Well, I came in and said the peacock eggs are gone. And the, the eggshells were all on the ground out Something there. Something ate them. One of the dogs, I think, Something. probably. Something got them. Anyway, um, we lost I'm... those eggs. We hope she's, I think she's moved from where she laid them. We're going to have to find where she's, she's laid them. She's sneaking around. I can't and find And if we can, we're going to lock her up or at least get the eggs and put them in the incubator. I'm get them eggs. Because I know that they're fertile because I've seen her and Kevin For together. The first time ever. Yeah. So... But we gonna, I'm gonna, if I find them, I'm going to get them this time. Yeah. And speaking of eggs, we got how many in that? Um, <coughs> well, you just told them a while ago. got 20 <coughs> eggs in one incubator right here in, in, in the little round incubator. And then she got 38 in the other one. But <coughs> we're going to give mama some. I'm going to keep some. And right. Yeah. yeah they, sure. A lot of, like I said, a lot more people getting into these chickens and stuff that I... I've talked to people, even people at work, like I told you last time, asking about chickens and eggs and uh, chicken coops and brooders and all that good stuff. So, yeah. but speaking of eggs, we were just out there messing okay, with, the, we mess with the fence. Out there. Okay, but anyway, I, I was trying to get the, the fence out of the out of our storage building, and she went and check on them, and she started hollering, "Lon, Lon, come here!" I ran around, and guess what was in the brood box? Corner. In the corner of the brood box. The devil. The devil. The serpent. The the chick the little baby chicks were over here in this corner all huddled together yep. and he was over there in this corner. And I looked and He had two places lumps, lumps in. I told Lies so he's eight ones. And she counted them and they were supposed to be twelve and what were ten. There were six yellow ones and six black yep. ones. 
And there were six yellow ones left so, and four black ones. He got two of my black ones. He, um. So I don't know how long he was in there. I don't know either, but. Long enough to eat two bitties. Yep, yeah, but he's, uh. He won't be eating He's no longer either. on, he's no longer on the premises. He won't be eating anymore. I don't care what they say about him. I don't care. Y'all know. They're not staying here. I heard, I, had a, I heard somebody tell me today, I was telling them about that. And one guy was talking about, well, you shouldn't um, you shouldn't kill a king snake. They kill other snakes. You shouldn't kill a rat snake. I remember they were just telling me this. And the guy told him, said, well, unless they show up and stand up and show me their identification, they gone. I just so, don't care. I mean, I'd what? rather have, I mean, what what you going to do, sacrifice your eggs and your bitties? Yeah. Right. No. Because anyway, he would have come back. Yeah, he would have. We've, we've well, had, we had a, the the little the lid on the brooder had because we, we got a light in there had a little crack in it and that's where that he must be where he slithered over in there but I can imagine those poor old things running from him yeah and then the two he caught but anyway we I got it secure now where nothing can't get out put some weights on it where nothing hopefully can't get in there now so hopefully the rest of them will be okay I'm gonna go out and check them. Before I go to bed at night, that's a lot going on on the homestead mm -hmm. from garden stuff to our animals. We, we too tackled him, didn't we? Double yeah, team. we double teamed old, old, old he serpent. He was going to mm, yep. eat my bitties. But that's what we got going on with the animals and everything here on the homestead and the garden and stuff, uh, starting seeds and they really growing. Still got to um, move my chicken coop over here. Yeah, we're still going to move the chicken coop over next to the garden. Honeybees are doing good. I got a I got a call from my buddy, um, brother Larry Gandy down in Mississippi, and um, get some more advice from him. I want to try to split those two hives if I can, but there's a lot of activity going on out there right now. They, right. they swarming like crazy with that warm. Well, they were with the warm weather. I, I looked at them today; they weren't quite as active, but it's been real cold today too. I mean, they've been there's been a lot of stuff for them to. They has been popping around here for us, the blossoms and the blooms. But yeah, that's where we are with the with the what's going on in the homestead. And they are uh, on the homestead last weekend. I told y'all on the little island thing I had out there. I left, went to the men's breakfast that I went to that morning. Had like ten or twelve men out there. And um, my, uh oh, to go to yawning, go. She going to sleep on me. But that men's breakfast turned out really, really good. I mean, really, really uh, a good spirit there. And um. Each one of us men talked about different things, and Brother Tim Skipper, the pastor there, which y'all seen Russell Ganey and Angie on here at um, Woodbury Cottage. Woodbury Cottage, that's their pastor, a uh, real good man of God, and um, Brother Brother Tim Skipper, he he opened up his shop and everything. His wife made breakfast for us, and I mean we had grits and eggs and sausage and uh, a light bread and coffee and orange juice. I mean it was good. So we're gonna start doing that probably once uh, a way top every every other month maybe, but whatever however that plays out. But that was really good. But then after that we had Collins, our great uh, niece's birthday party here, and that went very well. Um, she had a blast. She had a good time. We had a good crowd, good time of fellowship. Kids running play, play checking the animals. I, that really does me a lot of good. I mean, there was some of them was over there looking at the rabbits, some of them over there looking at the pot belly pigs, some of them over there looking at the goats and the sheep, and it was just all of them playing with Eli and Sadie, and oh. and it was, just, it was just amazing. Eli ran himself he, he did. And that same day, remember I told you to find folks, our YouTubers, that are subscribers that brought us the first load of uh, uh, lumber? Well, they called me back and they brought me another load, us another load of lumber, just as big uh, uh, as the first one, the truck loaded down. And what was amazing, um, the wife of this couple, she had told me last time, she said, man, I was hoping Robin Lynn would be here. She wasn't here. And she goes, Robin Lynn and uh, Corey's girlfriend, Madison, had gone shopping and stuff and they wasn't here. And, but this Saturday, I told them when they was on the line, I said, Robin Lynn's here and she was, Glad she was getting to meet her. When Robin was walking out there, she was just so glad to see her. And that, that does us a lot of good because we don't think ourselves of any, as anything. We humble pie. But to know that you're making that kind of an impact on somebody's life really goes a long way. And we really appreciate that. We don't count ourselves as anything except um, just plain country folk that love the Lord and trying to make a difference in this world. But we <laughs> thank y'all again for bringing that lumber. We had a good time, a fellowship. Um, 
but it was it was great. And I got a, a new pair of gloves out of the deal. He helped me stack it up and everything just like before. So thank y'all again for the lumber. Um, that's really a blessing, and we're going to get a lot of use out of that. Y'all pray for me. I've been asked to speak at several other men's meetings and stuff coming up. One that's coming Saturday, 8 o'clock, at a, uh, a church. It's not our church, another church where different churches come together and uh, have a good men's meeting there, have a, good, have a breakfast, have a speaker, and they asked me to speak this time. <clears throat> have a good time of fellowship, and I got another one in uh, April, and then but Tim Skipper's asked me to speak at the next men's meeting that we have, which is right across the road in front of our house. So um, excited about sharing the gospel there like I do on the island and, and on here. And Rob Lynn's got uh, involved in a lot of the uh, women's conferences here. <laughs> and some of the ladies at church have been too. What? You put that thumb over here on the bonnet. Yeah. But, you know, we're just trying to help, you know, share the gospel and get us involved in church and you know I, I pray for our missionaries to go across the ocean and other places we, we're thankful for them but we feel like we got a mission field right here at home that we're working on so we're gonna try to reach the age group of people we're trying to reach we're gonna maybe have them maybe have them out here if we can get that age group from about 15 16 up to like 25 like Corey's age and try to minister to those kids because they're at the age where they can understand and, and retain stuff. And that's the future of the church, the future of this country or whatever. So what? I'm talking with my hands yes. too much. Mm -hmm. But y'all pray that as the Lord's laid that on our heart when we try to reach out to those people and maybe, maybe have them, instead of in the church atmosphere, what? You can't help it. I can't help. <laughs> that's the preacher in me. But have them, you know, come out here to the house or somewhere, wherever they feel comfortable at and share the gospel with them kind of on their level. Yeah, maybe Corey, Corey can lead I'm hoping somewhere. he'll get to where he can do that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, if they just do Bible study, they can get together and do that. They won't need like a... Yeah. But maybe we could kind of get, get them he's started. He's got like a Bible study that him and Madison, I think, have been working on. Yeah. But we need to... We need to uh, pour into our young people because uh, you know the enemy's trying to take them down and discourage them, and we need to do our part to keep that. From and sometimes, happening. with young people at that group, they feel more comfortable about talking and opening up when adults are not there. Yeah, not that they're um, not adults. Some of unless them. they're you know young at heart adults like me and you. Yeah, but you they know, we, I mean, it's just something like. They feel freer to talk about stuff if, know, um, if the pastor and his wife wasn't there. Well, that's true, but then some of them... Especially when like it's your daddy and your mama. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just be praying about that. We're just going to try to, if nothing else, get them started and get them steered in the right direction and hopefully they can, you know, do that on their own. Um, visit church, got friend day, bring a friend day, uh, bring a friend to church day coming up, what, next Sunday? Yep. We'll have a meal is on the ground. It, not this coming Sunday, but the 19th. Not the 12th, but the 19th. Yep, so not this coming Sunday, but next. We have bring a friend day to church, and we, like I told you, we paid the church off a while back. Um, paid it paid it off uh, from 2012 till last year. 2022. Yep. So For 10 years. Yep, 10 years to pay it off. And man, that was, that's unheard of. But anyway, we're going to have a note-burning ceremony at the end of the service next Sunday at the Bring a Friend Day. So that's something to be proud of and thankful for, Not church not being in debt. That way we can help reach other people in the community yep. with God's money. Give. Yep. Give more. That's but anyway, that yeah. is what it is all about, giving and helping. And, not building bigger barns. Yep. But... Anyway, we love and appreciate you all. Hope you enjoyed it. sitting a spell with us and hear all about what we got going on here on the homestead. Um, it's just, it's just, no more it's just a good life. Uh, we really enjoy it here. God's got us here for a reason, and the door. The, the, we may share with y'all in another video how everything lined up for us to be here. It just, I think we have talked. We about might that. have, but we might need, and, but we still hadn't talked about our how we got started in the ministry. You know. We need to, we, I keep telling them I'm going to talk about that. We haven't talked about it yet, but 
more will than we will. But y'all leave some comments below. Let us know what you think about this. Thought about this come sit a spell. How'd you like them cupcake jars? Cake jars. Oh, they were good. I made cupcakes for Collins, like the birthday party, and, and I had some extra. Oh, and yeah, and I made Nick's, my nephew nephew's a, birthday. a cake. Yep. The, yeah, Monday. Yep. Because Collins and my nephew, they had the same birthday. Anyway, yep. I had some leftover ice and then cake, so I made these little, um, what they call cake jars. And has been sampling. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Might take a picture of them and put one of them in here. So they can see it. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, it's not like a whole piece of cake. You can just, you know, get a taste. Cause I, well, we, some of them I made bigger, but I'm gonna, Keep it smaller. That the, way you don't feel like you. I told you you should have done a video on it. You don't feel it. as guilty about eating that but one. But you had on. the cake and then icing and then more cake and then more icing. And Depends on how big the jar is. Yeah, but it's good. Those little jars I got. She put it in the refrigerator, but if you take and take it out and let it get the room temperature or either sit it outside in the sun and let it get real smacky smacky, I mean, that, that's really good. And then get you a cup of coffee or. Uh, okay, we meddling now. We better yeah. go on. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's good groceries. Until next time, y'all remember Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the answer for any and everything you're going through in life. Amen. We love y'all. Bye bye.